Hi everybody, it's Peter Schiff. I'm recording this on Thursday evening, June 7th, 2012. Well, earlier today, I was back up on Capitol Hill for an encore from my first congressional testimony. Now, to be honest with you, after my first testimony, I really didn't think they'd invite me back for a second try. In fact, if you haven't seen my first testimony, there is a link to it on this video. So give it a look and you'll know what I mean. But they invited me back again, and once again, I didn't pull any punches, so I'm not really sure how the odds makers would handicap my chances of making it a hat trick. But you never know. Just watch the following clips on your own and decide for yourself whether or not Peter Schiff is going to make it back to Capitol Hill for a third time. But before you do, let me set it up a little bit for you. I'm testifying before a congressional subcommittee on whether or not the government should extend loan guarantees to securitizations for multifamily homes. In other words, do the same thing for the multifamily market, what Fannie and Freddie did for the single family market. Just repeat the mistakes that helped create the housing crisis. Clearly the exact wrong thing to do. But the interesting thing about the testimony, and this is, shows you how Washington works, there were eight witnesses that testified. Six of the eight were basically lobbyists. They were all there representing the very special interests that specifically benefit from these guarantees because it helps them make a lot more money than they would make absent these guarantees. What is really frustrating is that the congressmen treat these guys as if they're impartial economists actually recommending things for the good of the country. They don't care about the country. They're recommending what's good for their own special interests. In fact, at one point, Congressman Green, who's a Democrat from Texas, asked for a show of hands of how many people believe we need, the country needs the FHA. And six hands went up. Of course, mine didn't. But the six people who raised their hands, those were the people who need the FHA for their own reasons, for their own special interests. The country didn't need it. They needed it. And the congressmen don't seem to know the difference. I was the only guy there, really, advocating on behalf of the American taxpayer who normally doesn't have a seat at that table because there's no special interest. There's no reason for me to be there other than to provide the counterbalance. They were all there saying that all these special benefits had no cost to the taxpayer. I was there to re remind them of the great cost, not just to the taxpayer, but to the economy. You know, also, Congressman Green, you'll see at one point he goes off on uh, his own revisionist view of American history in which he proclaims uh, that before the government had an FHA, uh, the lower income people, even maybe some middle income people, couldn't even get houses, that there was no, there, there was no market. And basically, maybe everybody was living in shanty towns or tents. I don't know what he was saying, but somehow he credits the government uh, for saving everybody and supplying housing as if the free market couldn't do it. But, you know, even the Republicans had a hard time understanding my message. There was one congressman hurt, a Republican from Virginia, who was somewhat sympathetic with what I had to say. But he asked me, he said, Peter, you know, we hear you talking, but you don't have any solutions. When are we going to hear solutions from you? And I think the reason he didn't hear solutions is because he didn't know what to listen for. See, he was listening for a new government program. I was trying to tell him that capitalism was the solution, that getting rid of government programs was going to save us, not creating new ones. They, they still have a hard time seeing the government as the problem and my desire to simply remove uh, these government programs as being the solution. But anyway, uh, it was a two-hour hearing. Unfortunately, you know, I didn't get to speak as, as often as I would have liked to, but I did manage to get a few words in as, edgewise. I had to try to be somewhat more respectful than I might have liked because I had to make sure they didn't throw me out. Uh, so there were a lot of times that I really wanted to speak, and maybe you can see me squirming, but I had to control that impulse. But anyway, watch for yourself, and don't forget, share this with your friends. I think it's important that we circulate this material so people can see what's going on in Washington, D.C., and how their interests are, are totally being uh, misrepresented and how legislation is being made by the special interests for the special interests. Enjoy. When this administration took office, the economy was on the brink. 
In the face of this turmoil, this administration took dramatic steps to prevent a complete financial meltdown. Owners must be assured of reliable, predictable funding from the government. Fully 40 percent of the FHA insured for, of the Section 8 portfolio is FHA insured. Um, increasing the supply of rental housing that is affordable to extremely low-income households must, uh, is, is part of the solution, but there is no evidence that the private market is willing to invest in this housing on its own, despite the huge demand. I'm here this morning representing the Mortgage Bankers Association. down the Department of Housing. It's a waste of money. as long as you want and answer all the questions you have on exactly
does FHA multifamily publish or publicly release historic, uh, uh, historical delinquency rates and, and claim rates? Thank you for that question, Chairman Biggert. Let me assure you that we are committed to transparency in publishing our data. We, there are any other ways that we can provide data or information to you uh, that you might need about our programs. So, so the answer is no, you, you don't publish those. We do publish some information on our website. Uh, but not, not the delinquency rates and the uh, claim rates? No, ma'am, we have not okay. published those. Could you provide those to us? Uh, yes, we could provide those. Well, would you please? Because uh, uh, it seems like it kind of suggests a lack of transparency and ability uh, for the public and the Congress to access, assess whether the multifamily programs are being operated in a, in a safe and prudent, prudent manner. I don't know whether to go to Mr. Schiff or not, but I guess I will. Okay. <laughs> uh, you, you believe that FHA should leave the uh, multifamily mortgage market altogether? Well, it should leave uh, the single-family market as well. Well, we're focusing on the multifamily. Yeah. Well, you have Uh, would the uh, securitization of FHA and HFA risk sharing? Uh,
Whether somebody rents a house or buys a house, let the market.
Well, these contingency liabilities will be realized and sure. they're enormous. But in
Uh, the fact is that we, if you go uninsured, you have still insurance, but it's paid for by the taxpayer because as a practical matter, and I've, I've been so... Boys forget what their country means by just reading the land of the free in history books. When they get to be men, they forget even more. Liberty is too precious a thing to be buried in books. Liberty is too precious a thing to be buried, be buried in books, Miss Saunders.